Welcome to Jenny's Paleontology lesson and welcome to another video. So this video is going to be part two of the speech that I gave during one of my paleontology classes about an amazing summer program called Stones and Bones. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So before that gets any wordier, I'll just get into what we did. So on the second day that we arrived at the campsite, which is after we pitched the tents, um, we started uh, a process of breaking the overburden with like sharp edge shovels, flat edge shovels, peccary picks, axes, like sledgehammering um, to sort of get rid of that first layer of overburden. So one of the reasons why um, the fossils in this formation are so well preserved is because of this layer of overburden or oil shell above all these layers that contains a lot of fossils. So that has been protecting all these different fossils from like weathering and extreme weather events for like the past 50 million years. But that is both a blessing and a curse because while it provides the opportunity to actually break through the overburden and find those fossils, breaking through the overburden was quite a chore. As you can see, we equipped it some very advanced <laughs> technology to try to break through that first layer. But after we did that, we worked on trenching, which is um, digging away at the soft matrix, soft flaky matrix around more concrete blocks. So we can figure out which uh, specific blocks or slabs we want to work at. So these softer matrices um, normally wouldn't hold a lot of fossils. And even if mm -hmm. it does, um, it wouldn't be successfully extracted or successfully prepared to be of any use. So that's why, that's why we just trench through it and try to um, define the different blocks. So we finally defined four different blocks that we're going to work on. And then I worked on the fourth block more towards the right side. And in our block, at least, we first decided to sl split the huge slab that you can see is from the front all the way in the back into little smaller sections because of how flaky and soft the upper layers were. So um, just to tell you why these layers might be soft and flaky, that means they're really saturated with water. We even lifted up slabs where there were actually still fresh water remaining underneath. So these layers are definitely very much saturated with water. And so that's why it's really important to leave them out under the sun to dry and then uh, to make sure that they're all set to be split. So how we split this layer is, is by putting the shim at sort of the side of the layer and then hammering it in and then putting like shovels in there and then bounce it up and down to further the crack. And then when we think it's good, we will lift up, I'd say about half an inch thick of layer, um, maybe sometimes even as large as half the slab, and then position it and orient it towards the sun in such a way that the cell was, would cast the shadow of all the different like bulges um, and just the different characteristic on the rock across as shadow so we can see if there are any indications of fossils. So by indication of fossils, an example of that would be, say if we're looking for fish. So an indication of a fossil fish would be like a bulge in the rock in the shape of a vertebrae. Um, and, you know, experienced paleontologists like Drew and Adrian who worked on our block could really tell you the species of the fish, the orientation, and like all of these different information from just looking at the bulge. And then if we have a very thick layer, we would consider splitting it and resplitting it so that we can see if there's any fossil trapped inside. Um, and then, inevitably, we sort of went into harder layers that are much harder to break through. So that could be layers that are just really rock hard or layers that refuse to be split neatly into layers that we can lift up. So what we did is we sledgehammered. So basically we would sledgehammer through the rougher patches, which sometimes meant an entire layer, and then go back to shimming and hammering and lifting up layers. Um, we also used a lot of electrical equipment, especially you can see the blower that was holding in that middle picture. So that blower has two different purposes. So first of all, it's obviously to blow away the debris that is, you know, as a result of all the sledgehammering and as a result of all the trenching, but it's also to dry the blocks. Because remember how I said all these blocks are really saturated with water? So by blowing them dry or just leaving them out in the sun, we can make them easier to split. We also, the way that we extracted the fossil from all these layers is by first locating it, obviously, say on the slab, and then we would draw a rectangle around it with a frame. And then we would cut along the lines of that rectangle with power saws about an inch deep. And that is because we want to avoid damaging the layer that the fossil is in by further splitting more layers. So if we cut off, you know, sort of the contact of the fossil 
square or rectangle with the rest of the layer when we're lifting up more things, it wouldn't damage the cost. So that is part two of the entire speech that I gave about this amazing summer program called Stones and Bones. What do you think of the program so far? Have you attended any similar programs? Leave something in the comment section below and hopefully see you next time.